We are at Cooling Tower 1, TVA Fossil Plant. A little cold this morning, a lot of ice. We're going to be showing uh, exactly how we uh, do the uh, cooling tower pull down. And uh, we'll get a bunch of this uh, on tape for reference. As you can see, it's about uh, 10 degrees out here. Quite a bit of ice. Dumpsters, equipment. We'll go around and show you some of the rest of the tower. Some of our skid steer loaders with grapple buckets. Operators getting them warmed up. These are dumpsters that are lined. Now train site material going those. We've got 10 of these placed around the site. Probably fill eight or ten of them a day. These are the large rubber tire loaders that perform the handoff. Bobcats dump into these and they carry them over here to the uh, dumpsters and load them up. Here's a couple of the uh, nozzles we use for wash down. These are set up with a one inch bore, smooth bore, nozzle push water about 130 foot at 100 PSI. Got our silt lay down area. All this silt was brought out of the basin. Second decanning area. Estimated about 4,000 cubic yards of asbestos contaminated silt material currently covered in polyfilm to be loaded to TVA's uh, landfill after it uh, moisture uh, content is reduced so that it can be landfilled uh, properly. Here we are at the edge of the basin. You can see where uh, we've got a lot of the cabling rigged up. On each one of these bays begin the pull down operation here later on this morning. You can see that the basin's pretty well empty of silt back to our approximate 95 percent level uh, prior to uh, beginning any of the pull down. We're pulling down just the perimeter bays. Once again you can see uh, cable rigging that was all done yesterday. We got about 15 bays ready to uh, pull down. Some more of the uh, cabling shown. One of the longest pull downs. We're going to pull this whole side in one pull. Bring it down. You can see a lot of the water hoses set up, and there's also uh, electric set up for uh, purposes of the uh, air testing. Uh, we're doing area monitoring as well as all the personal monitoring during uh, all the operations. Uh, more of the decanning area as they call it. Again estimated about 4,000 cubic yards of material. That's tower number two currently in operation and uh, you can see what happens as the water begins to come down and freeze. Freezes on the panels causes the perimeter base to break fall into the basin. That's what we're trying to uh, repair on this particular job here. Now, one of the other items that's going to be removed will be the uh, de-icing piping here at the top. And you can see pieces of the de-icing uh, header located right here. Uh, you see some of the cabling uh, for the pull downs in these particular areas. See some areas in the basin where we've got uh, rigging set up. Cable from the top, large cables around the footers. Appropriate shift blocks are installed, and then that's where we pull. So, a couple, three or four shift blocks, and these are pulled out with the loaders. All right, we're getting ready to make our first pull. We get water going, and the loader backs up, pulls the cable, and down it comes. 
keep it wet. Mike with the right hard hat makes the call. Loader begins backing up, tightening up the cable. Goes constant water. There's first bay. Keep it a little wet. Bring down the next one. Is it down cable? We got another two rigging. Yeah, as soon as we get, we get everybody out of the basin first. Here comes the next big bay. You can see the cable cutting right through it. And that's about the ticket. The pull, for reference, there's where air monitoring is in the basin currently. There's air monitoring up on top as well. Here we are down by Tower 3. See what happens when the cold weather is about 20 some degrees. Freezes the water, sticks to those inner cells, and then falls off. Give you some idea of what happens. This is the next one we're going to be doing, Tower 2, and then we're working all the way down on Tower Number 1, way down there. And so our operators here waiting to get back in and hit the pile. Use the scissors lifts in the basin to get up to access underneath. And you can see what it looks like underneath. You can see where it's missing a lot of the material that hangs in those little ledges and all that material is falling out and that's why all this is getting replaced. The pipe you see up there is the de-icing header which gets removed. They don't really work very well is what I've been told. They will not be reinstalled. Uh, once again our operators work on, we're dropping some loose pipe. Uh, hoses you see here provide our water which runs around and up to the base of the stairs. We'll go up there and take a look around. A little bird's eye view. Top of the steps. So we enter the tower. You might want a nice little walk to the top ring. 540 some feet. And on the last landing, you have to walk and face out. Not something that I'm looking forward to doing. All right, a little perspective as we walk inside the tower. Once again, inside the tower. Underneath is where we rigged it and installed all the OSB plywood in order to protect the separation uh, pieces. You can see some of them located right there. We put two befores on each side, protect those, and then cover them so that uh, they don't get damaged. But once again, you can see a lot of damage to drift eliminators up here over time. You get an idea here as to how they're standing on top of the fill material, working on the uh, cutting the piping. You hear it echo as it falls out and they're breaking it as they're sending it out of the bottom. It's only about four feet between the bottom of the drift eliminator and the top of the fill. Now here's a good example of where we pull down the actual fill. We're looking down to the outside. You can see how what we call tiers 
of the material stacked up and hangs on those little lips we pull them down. Those won't be removed. These are the perimeter bays which are located right near the outside wall and we're pulling all these down uh, right in here. A lot of these drift eliminators you can see how broken and damaged they are uh, will be replaced uh, but the determination of how many is yet to be made. Uh, once again you can see what happens when how they rig. Run our wood out, walk out on it, Everybody's got fall protection. It's a good example of worker coming out, totally 100% tied off on his fall protection. Here you can see where we cable off, retractable fall protection, decking material. Where they're breaking a pipe underneath. Drop it, we roll it, and we dump that material out. There's some more areas of uh, damaged drift eliminators. And I'm afraid we're going to get a lot more damage from bringing them up. The noise you're hearing is piping rolling underneath the drift eliminators. Uh, the guys are cutting it loose and then they dump it out the side of the hole. Uh, see some of the cut pipe that's cut and the thimbles are located right here and that's what needs to be removed as the last piece. And the final documentation, we're also monitoring air up here. Inside that protected from any moisture is the high volume air pump and there would be the cassette that will be analyzed uh, for fiber concentration. It's always indicated about four or five feet off the ground test to make sure all tests so far have all been clean and they continue to work. As you can see here we got a worker retrieving the hick and the shiv block off up underneath. And of course he's working out of a man basket coming up from the basin. You can see him in the man basket. They're coming from the outside access and the perimeter cells uh, here. So uh, we got to access it from all sides, top, bottom, and in between. But uh, a lot of work, of course. Everybody's 100% tied off. Uh, well, in the lifts as well as uh, what they're working on up here uh, on top of the uh, decking material that you can see right here. There's a view underneath worker you see the fall protection these are retractables keep them tied off he's working over near the edge now we're down on top of the fill you can see all the thimbles sticking out here and these will all be taken out with pneumatic equipment and we take all the pipe once we get it here and we roll it off and dump it into the basin uh, down below now they're working on getting some of the hangers out of the way and trying to get things cleaned up. You can see a couple more guys knocking pipe down, knocking out the holes around the uh, edge of the material. Way over here, you can kind of see that's the number of sheets that are involved. That's the top row. Now that'll get demolished on the next time that we pull the uh, material out from underneath. The last little bit. You can see where we actually get delamination of some of the transites. These are the drift eliminators. But they having some really some damage issues here to work with. Bird's eye view. Kid steer loaders. Work the material. Bring it up. Hand it off into the dumpster or into the loader. Need a little work room. It's a little difficult here. Right at the very perimeter. Operation. Up the 
motion together. We load it out. Move the material. They keep working it together. Poly on the ground in case you get any outfall or in good shape. Now he'll take that loader. And run it over to the dumpster. You see over here that our poly line. Comes back, gets another one. We keep the operation moving along. They dump it straight into the dumpsters, they're filled, head to landfill.